Hi, welcome to an episode of Hashtag Deep Dive, a look into the industry through the viewpoint of so many people. I will be chatting with people like producers to stage managers from everyone in between. I cannot wait for you guys to see who is going to be in the screen next. I'm your host, Taylor Orn. Let's get started, shall we? Well, uh, my name is Mike Summers. Um, I also go by Michael Seven Summers. Um, I mean, I've done music production now for, uh, I guess it's been, a, uh, I mean, really since about 1998. And I've worked with, I mean, a lot of people. I mean, my, I, my career really actually started in Kansas City working with uh, Tech Nine. And so like, I would say like 50% of my career has been working with tech and developing him and working like with that label. And so, you know, I've done a lot of major label stuff, but I've really been heavily involved in independent music production, you know, and it all kind of stemmed from my involvement with uh, tech and just, you know, being such a big part of uh, producing him and his career. So, you know, but I mean, along the way, I mean, I've worked with, uh, you know, everyone like Kendrick, Wayne, Eminem, lots of stuff with E40 and Snoop, Logic, uh, Mac Miller. Um, I mean, just Wiz Khalifa, just kind of, you know, this goes kind of on and on. And, you know, but I've worked in, you know, a lot of different genres too. So I've worked with a lot of, so like in the hip hop genre and also rock and metal and yeah, kind of like, you know, dabbled in everything. Ooh, so, yeah. wow. So I'm <laughs> curious, um, cause you started this all with, uh, with uh, Tech 9 how did the relationship start it? Well, um, I live in LA now, but um, I was born and raised in Kansas City, which of course is where tech is from. And uh, actually from like a super young age, I was involved with music production. I started working with tech actually when I was 14, I was a sophomore in high school. And um, it was really actually just because at the time there wasn't a lot of people doing production for like local artists in the Midwest. And, you know, I was like one of the few, I was like one of like 10 other producers. I was kind of like working with this circuit of independent artists or like really like local artists at the time um, in and around Kansas City. And um, I just, tech was someone that was, everyone knew in Kansas City, it was kind of like, was going to be like the one from the city. And, um, Around that time, he ended up getting a placement on um, the gang-related soundtrack with uh, Tupac, and it was a song that he had produced by QD3, and um, I, that was like one of, that was that song, he had, the song was actually called Questions, and when I heard that, I could just remember being like 14 years old and just being like, oh my god, this is like the most incredible thing I've ever heard, and um, I just had to figure out a way to get to him and like, you know, get involved like with what he was doing. Like I said, at the time he was, he was much, you know, he was, I mean, a local artist like coming up, you know? And um, I ended up meeting him through a DJ in Kansas City who, uh, his name was DJ Fresh. He introduced me to tech um, and they were working on a local Kansas City compilation project called 50 MCs. Uh, and um, on that project, I ended up ended up producing the song for tech. And since then, it was just, you know what I mean? We were like connected, you know what I mean? We did like everything together. And um, I was always sort of involved with his career from that point on out. Yeah. yeah. I'm so curious uh, with the whole uh, friendship um, between you guys. Was there any type of uh, moments where you're like, yeah, I think this is going to be the track that's going to like go big or was there more uh, or did you have like those tracks that just felt like it could be better or there's. Sure. Well, yeah. I mean, if you're familiar, like, you know, tech's been around for a long time, too, you know, and so yeah. like tracing it back to his out al the album that we did called Ever Ready. Right. It was um, it came out in 2006. But uh, we actually started working on it in 2004. And um, I don't know, to me, it was kind of like, 
one of his main sort of like breakthrough albums. Um, you know, we worked with just bigger like artists on that project. And there were some things about that album that really kind of like took him to kind of like a, a new plateau. Um, but when we worked on that album, that was the album where um, I, I knew that we needed to kind of develop a sound for tech that was like an identifiable sound that was going to be his sound something that was different something that like sort of that would that brought out what he does as an artist you know that was where i was like okay i'm going to really focus on production that caters to what he does as an artist and so you know tech is very like rhythmic and very like you know he's all about cadences and patterns and i was like the production absolutely has to give him like a foundation to like, you know, magnify what he does as an artist. So that album has the song Come Gangster on it. And Come Gangster was like, for me, the song that sort of like changed everything. That was where, I, you know, I, I like, I took a sound and was like, I'm gonna focus on these elements, which was kind of like classical elements. It was dark, it had strings. It was like really something that would have even been used for, like scoring a movie, you know what I mean? Like that was how I treated the production. I remember it was like that song I actually worked on for three days straight, which is like still to this day. I mean, this is like 2004 and to this day, I still haven't spent like so much song, like time on a song. This is like 10 hours a day, just getting up, working on the same track over and over and over again for three days straight. And I mean, my, my intention was to like give him like create like the tech nine sound. And so come gangster was it was actually the first song that we did for ever ready. And to me still like the most important track that we ever did together, because it was like, since we did that track that was kind of like the foundation or like maybe like the blueprint that we followed, you know, for his sound and um, uh, So to answer that question come gangster on ever ready was the like to me still like the most important song and like the turning point you know like with him that was the song i was like okay we did everything right on that when i did the track i gave it to him i didn't tell him what to do i didn't say like you know do this section this way or do that section that way and it's a pretty intricate track because it breaks down and has all these different like moments where it does like pretty complex things but i was like let me just give it to him let me see what he does i know what i would want him to do but i just don't want to tell him what he did to it without me telling was exactly what I had, like exactly. And I just knew at that moment, like, oh man, we are on to like something with that. Yeah, yeah. Gosh, wow, that's intense. Wait, yeah. so 10 hours for three days straight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, I mean, yeah, at the time, I mean, it was a long time ago. So it was before things had really developed. So, I mean, you know, I was just living in an apartment and I had the studio set up like in the kitchen area. So it was like, you know, our whole dead apart our whole apartment was like dedicated to like pretty much the studio. It's like all we we did in there. And um I mean, yeah, it was just like waking up, working for 10 hours, go to sleep, just get up and do I just, you know, I just knew that I just knew that if I could get that track right and we did the right thing with it it would be like the starting point of something now here you are working yeah. with him again on yeah. face off oh my yeah. gosh the song that's blowing up everywhere yeah. i cannot escape that song and out <laughs> working in the middle of nowhere i'll hear the song randomly and be like oh my gosh it's here they finally <laughs> the, the song has finally invaded the small part of this town oh um, yeah that's crazy i can't believe that the song is like everywhere it's, you know <laughs> yeah I, guess like, I can kind of believe it because it's like the rock so i mean you know <laughs> how could it not be oh my gosh so before i we jump into the rock realm um i want to know like how did this idea kind of come together because you have so many people on this track yeah yeah okay yeah so the track is actually older like it was really? yeah we i did the track for um an album for the album before this album so uh this album is asinine but this was actually created uh when we were working on um interfere which was the album we put out right before this and um 
It was actually the one track that was left over. I mean, I must have made maybe like 25, 30 tracks for that album. And um, a lot of times when we work on albums, you know, we'll, they'll be like five or six, like a handful that we just don't use. They don't get, you know, yeah. they just don't end up coming out right or, or whatever it is, you know. But on Interfere, we ended up using all of the tracks because he released um a couple eps right after oh, the album okay. like you know let's re you know let's release the unreleased songs but that particular one we just it, we never did anything with and i kind of always i just let it go i forgot about it i'm like you know this is that must be the one that we're throwing away we're not going to do anything with it but in the back yeah. of my mind i was like man we should like i wish we would have used that track for something because it's like you know it's really like, uh, you know, the quintessential Tech Nine sound, that track, you know, it's got like yes. the dark, like, you know, like, you know, it's got like the choir aspect. A little bit of a haunting feel to it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's still it like was, campaigning at the same time. You just like, you get yeah. excited. Totally. It's like, it's Tech Nine sound. It's like the energy and all of the elements that make tech what tech is, that track has in it. But it was the one track that we didn't use for anything. And I was like, what will ever come of it? And I, me and Tech were in the studio. We must have thrown around like, I mean, 10, 15 different names of like artists that could, you know, that we could hear on it. Um, but just nothing ever worked out. And um, so I just forgot about it. And so when The Rock ended up on the track, that was actually a surprise to me too. Like I didn't know oh, that really? that was, yeah, I had no idea that it was going to come back out. Tech, once they had it kind of going, um, you know, as a producer, I was kind of kept, like I, they kept it totally under wraps. Like even from me, it was like super, you know, internal. And so um, I didn't know anything about it. Um, they it just kind of came out and so for me i woke up to that i was like oh my god the track is out this is the track and the rock is on it you know kind of like the last person that i would have ever thought you know would would be on the track and so it was like a moment for me you know just like i said like waking up and being surprised and um you know and then the other two artists that are on there which is king iso and joey cool um are both uh text artists on strange so on the label okay. and they like they they killed it too like yeah that the verse that joey has on it is like his like best verse that i've ever heard him do you know, know. Like, they killed it so they all of their energies are just so perfect for the track like in, including the rock you know he sounds great on it <laughs> yeah gosh um so my first time listening to it, I was just like, all right, this is this is dope. This is great. Love it. And it just flows really well with everyone combined. I didn't know it was The Rock until that one line. And I'm like, oh, oh yes. wait, yeah, yeah. what? Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It, it, I didn't recognize him right away. And I was just like, the moment I heard yeah. it, I was like, wait, no, no, no. Let me rewind this back. Let me just pull back. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. No, it is. It's a crazy like moment. And that was that it's that from what i know now about how it all came together um he wanted to have that moment where he, that line you know like he wanted that moment to happen you know or, and he wanted to be like a super like aggressive in your face like what's my motherfucking name rock you know what i mean so um and you know there was like i know that tech like assisted in like working with the you know work, working with him like on the verse and everything and getting it like, you know, 100% to feel the way that it that it feels and everything. And so a lot of it, the, the verse really, it just feels so perfect, like with tech, you know what I mean? Like it yeah. works so well with him and his sound and the sound of the song, obviously, so. Gosh, I'm reading this note on here from uh, Complex, uh, that the song is like 14.4 million views on just the music uh, on just the music video alone 17 like, million now 17 like, million oh it's like God. it goes up like between 500 and 750,000 a day you know and it was like the craziest part to me was actually not even that what was the craziest thing to me was to see it be like a number one trending tiktok like a tiktok yes so that that's was, actually that <laughs> That's where I technically heard the song first was through TikTok. Okay. I was like, oh, I like Tech Nine. I went and saw his uh, um, his set at Bunbury Music Festival a couple okay. of years ago. Yeah. Um, now that yeah. just that verse alone, just the Rock's verse alone, uh, constantly everywhere on my feed. 
Oh yeah, it, it's cr yeah. I I mean I see it too. I mean I hear everybody talking about it now, like about the the face off challenge and everything. Yes. That was I like I expected the YouTube views. I was like, you know, this is going to do that, but the face off challenge on TikTok that was totally unexpected to me I'm, and super like cool, <laughs> like crazy. So, so it's not uh besides face off, you've got a huge library of songs you produce, and the one that also like. Was, like the moment I saw the line in there, I was just like, wait, he did that. I got to know about uh, rocket hour, the whole Which, Elton John. Um, oh yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was, um, that was pretty crazy too. There is that actually Elton John, there was a, an interview that exists, you know, and Elton John yeah. says about like, you know, the production, like tech nine's production and everything. And that's like, the biggest i don't know to me like the craziest like compliment i've ever like received i mean from elton john you know so it's amazing yeah. so i don't really know what to say about it it's like surreal to me <laughs> gosh just to hear just to be able to have that ability to be like yeah elton john liked it yeah yeah that's <laughs> yeah i don't yeah I don't, sometimes it's just so crazy i don't even know how to like say it you know it's just so surreal but it's amazing though the a huge compliment so when yeah. it comes to producing a song and finding the right, um, I guess to say the right tones for the right artists, you've worked with so many artists. Was there a moment where you had this really good, um, not say tone, but feel of a song that you thought was going to be perfect for a person and ends up not being the case? They decide, you know, hey, no, this is not it yeah i mean that has i mean that's happened a lot to me you know yeah. um uh i mean it just kind of comes with it sort of comes with the territory i've just done it so long that you know that has that's happened um before uh a lot i i okay there is a particular track that i um i'm thinking of that i know was that we had to rework a lot. I mean, I spent weeks on this trying to get it right. And it was it was the first song that me and Tech did with Corey Taylor uh, from Slipknot. It was the song Wither. And um, it was such a big deal because f forever, like, I mean, but for both Tech, for both of us, me and Tech, you know, working with like Slipknot was um, like, just sort of like a dream, you know what I mean? Like we always wanted, we always wanted to do that. We always talked about that. The fans always wanted that. Fans are always like, oh, Tech should work with Slipknot. And Slipknot was sort of like a big influence to both of us. Um, mm -hmm. And so when we, you know, Tech knew Corey, I think kind of loosely, you know, they had talked before and that kind of stuff. It was like, one day we're going to do a song together. And um, Wither was a track that, I, going into it, I had like, uh, like, I felt like I knew exactly what the track needed to be, you know, exactly what it should be for both Tech and Corey. Um, and I remember I, I put together the track, the the whole entire track, and it's it's another very complex track. So this is like a week of production, you know what I mean? Not as like strenuous, like as when I did Come Gangster, like 10 hours a day, but like, you know, yeah. just working on it for a week straight. And um, it actually took me three tries to like get it right. You know, I would I work on the track and be like, that's just not it. I just know it's not it. Almost to the point where I didn't even want to show tech even after like a week's work because I just know that it wasn't it. And uh, sometimes with work like that, you know, with, with those tracks, I have a lot of people involved, you know, I'll bring in drummers and guitarists and, and different people to like execute certain parts. And so, It'll pretty much be like working from Monday to Friday and then Friday comes along and I have the track done and I just sit back and I'm like, but it's not it. I just know this is it. We just have to start again next Monday. Let's just take, you know, Saturday and Sunday off next Monday. Let's just go back at it, you know, and uh, that's what we did on that track. I did it like once, twice, and then the third time was like, OK, I just I knew it was it. But um, but yeah, that one was a tough one to get and sometimes it's just like that sometimes you have to just you know go through several different versions to to get it right i guess you know and i'm so yeah. happy I, I did that so many times um because to me it did end up being like the perfect collab for a tech and, and for 
was there any more of like, hey, I need this to be more of a oh, Slipknot tone or, yeah. or does it still need to be more of a Tech 9 tone? So that's always the, the trick, right? So like yeah. finding the perfect marriage between the two sounds. It's like you, like for me as a producer, it's like super important that I create the essence of both of them, you know, tech sound and Corey sound. It can't be like leaning one or the other, you know, it can't really sound like, you know, we created a track for Slipknot and tech's just getting on it. And it also can't be, you know, this is just a regular tech nine track and Corey's get on it. It has to be the perfect marriage of the two. And so for me, creating like the tech nine part is always, it's sort of like, you know, I just, I just know, you know what I mean? How to do that. But then with Slipknot, this was the first time me trying to create something that um, would authentically fit Slipknot, but I'm also doing it without like the members of Slipknot. So I'm finding like the right guitarist that knows the right guitar mm -hmm. tones. And I'm like, listening to that that song by the way was based off of volume three like i listened to volume three like slipknot's volume three like over and i just like lived with it for like weeks and weeks to be like let me make sure i'm bringing that energy in you know to, to the song and so you know i i would have to it, it, like most of the time was just sitting down and saying okay let's let, like let's get this guitar tone as authentic as possible and so i'm just spending like hours really trying to get the guitar to sound like authentically Slipknot, you know, and then doing other things. Like I remember on that song, uh, we went and got um, just an empty beer keg, right? So I could just bring it to the studio and just get a bat and like hit it, you know what I mean? To you, to, yeah. and we actually use that as like the snare sound because that's something that Slipknot would do like in live shows, you know, they would have like two like percussionists playing like pretty much like kegs, you know? And so, so I got to do that on that track. It was like, you know, just like little elements like that. It was like, once I have the Tech 9 foundation built, now let's bring like all of these like authentic Slipknot elements into it and, you know, hope that they marry each other perfectly. You know, yeah. <laughs> you brought up an uh, interesting point. Um, because, uh, because of the crazy elements of each other, um, and you mentioned the keg. Has there been any random instrument or random prop, cross it out, random prop that you threw in that you're like, yeah, let's put this in there? Oh, man, I try to do stuff like that as much as possible. Like if I'm, I mean, I'm the kind of producer that if I'm just like walking around like Hollywood or something like that, and there's someone that's just like playing some super weird, bizarre instrument that I've never seen before, I'm like, you should come to the studio. You know, that that happens like, I try to like introduce that idea into music as much as possible because um, it just it like it really just makes something like there's a there's a magic that happens when you do that you know there's like an element that someone wouldn't think of you know to you know to use typically and it just makes something feel unique and so I mean I've used like players I, people that do I mean we've on on our track bout to bubble which was gosh that was from ever ready also that was maybe the <laughs> first time that we tried something really weird we had someone that specialized in playing the kazoo come in and it's literally the main instrument of the song is just someone playing the kazoo oh my goodness. Uh, on the hook and it kind of sounds like a siren in the end but it was totally just a person playing a kazoo you know um like a professional kazoo player, I guess. I didn't even know that was a thing. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's probably kid. not a thing. It's just a crazy <laughs> idea, you know, like maybe it'll work. And a lot of times it doesn't work either. You know, it'll be like, oh, that was like not the greatest idea for us to try, but we had to try it, you know, so. I didn't know still the fact that, you, oh my gosh, I didn't even know that that was a kazoo. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Now I a definitely lot of people don't, but it's like, that's really how like Bout to Bubble was created. There's like a, uh, it's, everybody thinks it's a siren, but it's actually someone playing a kazoo. Now I'm going to have to listen to that song again, just yeah. to visualize a, a person in the background, just with a kazoo in the corner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's absolutely what it was. So. Wow. All right. Now I got some information and tippet that I didn't know about. Ooh. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now I have to ask this because it's a Michigan thing. I have to. Um, 
how's it like working with Eminem? Well, okay. So that was another, obviously like a dream come true type of yeah. situation. Gosh, me and Tech have talked about, we've created so many songs for Eminem. That must've been like the fourth or fifth one. Every album that we've done, we're like, okay, this is the song for Eminem. And then the next album, like, this is the song for Eminem. Okay, this is the song for Eminem. Just every album we have like the song for Eminem. And it's always been like an issue of sort of like timing, you know? Um, I always felt like it would happen, but it's just going to have to be the perfect timing. It's going to have to be the right song, and it's just going to have to be Eminem really wanting to do it and having like the time to do it, you know. And how do yeah. we like really make him focus on on what we're trying to do? And um, of course, with like Speedum, Speedum was the very first song that we did for special effects. And special effects to me is is like probably my favorite album that I worked on with Tech. That was the album where anything that i wanted to do like production wise they let me do i just did everything i had like there was days where i had full choirs you know um in the studio and other days where i had full like you know like 15 piece string sections in the studio and we're working with like movie composers and so the first song that we did was speed em, the song with eminem and um that was the initial idea. Tech was like, we're going to do this song, Speedum. It's going to be Worldwide Choppers Part 2. And it just has to be Eminem. And um, it was his idea to use the Richie Havens interpolation, which is freedom, of course. Um, he wanted to start with that and just build it out from there. Um, and so I did it. You know, I like I created a track, like exactly sort of like I brought the vision to life. And I'm like, all right, so let's see what happens here. We sent it to Eminem and we did the whole album. The album took a year to make. We worked on it, yeah, for maybe even a little bit over a year, nothing from Eminem. It was, there was, there was nothing, you know? I'm like, well, it's probably not going to happen. But at the very last minute, I'm, I mean, like, literally like the last hour, like before the album has to be turned in and mastered. Like, this is like, a, a, like an hours type of situation. Oh my goodness. His verse comes over. They, he, he sent it over and um, it was actually kind of like out of the blue. They locked the studio down. No one could know, like it was like a literal lockdown and very few people got to hear it and um, hear the track. Tech called me on the phone. I was at a different studio and um, he put me on speakerphone to listen to it for the first time. And so um, it was like, I was actually, yeah, it was actually a surreal moment. You know, I just couldn't, believe it you know but i yeah i listened to it with tech over speakerphone and um and it was like yeah he he killed it you know um and it ended up being like the final last little piece with like an hour to go that we got in for the album and uh we had an eminem verse finally and he like really went in on it like he like killed it so he even he even actually in his verse if you go and listen to his verse You'll notice that there's like some elements that come in like there's a little like piano part and a string piece and like different stuff that he actually added himself to the production so like in his Ooh. verse he like took extra time to go and add some like instrumental stuff which is crazy like no one had ever done that to a track of mine before so <laughs> wow Oh my gosh, I'm just so excited that the fact that this was like down to the wire. Oh, it was crazy. Yeah, it was literally like, you know, less than an hour to go or something, you know, and it came over. So, and that, you know, that happens sometimes, but that was the first time that it had happened to us like that. And um, yeah, it was just a huge moment. Man, wow. I'm just so, I'm just so excited for you. And I love, love hearing all, everything, all the stories I have to know as someone who's trying to get into the industry, how did you get into it? And then, yeah, how well, would you suggest? I mean, the way that I got into it is a lot different than the way that I would get into it now, because, of course, like when I started, there wasn't social media and there wasn't so like, I mean, now you can you can literally connect with people, you know, that you other, you know, back when I was like coming up, you wouldn't have been able to connect with. It would have been much more much more of a difficult process and it's it's so it's it's a good thing and a bad thing because back when i started out you had to really go out of your way like i mean you have to like i don't know drive to someone's show and hope to get backstage and be like you know let me show you some music that i'm working on and 
back then that worked because not a lot of people were doing that. So if you were able to like finagle that and make that work and get backstage, you know, you have a high likelihood that you could actually get like an artist attention. Right. But nowadays, like everyone does it. Right. So that doesn't work anymore. Cause it's just like, even if you do do it, you know, or even if you, tr there's just too many people trying, it's too saturated. Right. And so, uh, so that doesn't really work anymore. And now it's really truly more about building yourself up, like building your brand, like as a producer or as a musician or as a composer or whatever, you, as a writer. Um, if you do one of those things that are sort of like supportive parts of producing an artist, because of social media and because now you can reach the world, it's really more in building your brand, you know, and so you can be a producer that doesn't have a major placement, but still build a fan base on your own. You can literally build like a social media fan base and then be capable of getting everyone's attention, you know, and because of that, you know, you don't need to really be chasing all of these placements anymore. There's so many ways to make money now and so many ways to like just have a come up without actually getting placements. And so I always tell, I always tell like, like aspiring producers and writers um, to not so much focus on just saying, okay, how do I make tracks and get them to artists? But I tell producers to try to create an original sound, like try to introduce something new to the industry and then build yourself as a brand, you know, put what you do out there into the world by means of like social media, um, all of the avenues that we have now, don't necessarily try to go after a placement, you know, build yourself out and the placements will come to you because those resources are there now. It's, it's really more about two things. It's about being something different, like filling a void and then being consistent. And with those two things, like with enough time, it's it's inevitable you're bound to build something it might take a while but like if you stick to it it will pan out for sure wow thank you yeah yeah <laughs> that's, that's kind of my take on it you know i mean yeah of course there's so many different avenues like into the industry some producers do just end up right place right time in the studio randomly you're just in the studio with who you know whatever you're in the studio with polo g just by accident and you end up you know getting like a co-production credit on a you know on a, on a polo g album or something and now you're kind of you know you have like your first major placement but and there's a lot of that too you know just kind of being open to those opportunities where if you're somewhere like you know like i live you know where i live la it's like every day i could technically be in a different session you know just wherever i sort of land and who knows what'll come of that? I may end up in the studio with whoever, you know, and just by chance get on a song, you know, like just almost like a co-production type of thing. So, so collaborating is another really big deal. Cause like in the producer community, you know, you might collab with another producer that does end up on, you know, like a big album, but you, you know, did the drums on that track or you like played keys on that track or you kind of like assisted in some way and you have a co-production credit, which is just as big as like, like a main credit, you know? Yeah. And then that just adds up to the ability of being able to say, Hey, I did work on this person and That's I did true. work on that person. Yeah. If you're just in the studio by chance and all of a sudden Kendrick Lamar is there and the producer that you're working with is like, you know, working on a track for Kendrick Lamar and they're like, Hey, you got an idea for like a, a baseline and you just come up with the baseline just on the spot you did it you're in there you you're you're on the album you know so that's huge well you mentioned kendrick lamar how did that one happen or was it exactly as you're saying no so kendrick uh i actually so the, the track that i produced with kendrick is actually called textbook stuff and um it's with an artist named xv who was on warner brothers a while back um i want to say it was around 2012 and um kendrick was kind of always in like how can I, he was, he was a round artist that I was producing, right? So okay. me and XV were, um, you know, close to like the TDE camp, you know, he had worked with Schoolboy Q and Absol and um, a lot of the people that he dealt with at Warner also were kind of like connected to TDE, but also 
Kendrick Lamar was J-Rock's hype man, right? Before he was Kendrick yeah. Lamar. And J-Rock was signed to Strange. That was one of um, the artists that we had on Strange. And the first, like, uh, sort of the way that Kendrick got on was by going on tour as just J-Rock's hype man on the tour. And I remember telling Tech, like, yes, J-Rock is super dope. J-Rock is, like, out of here, crazy, but... Kendrick Lamar is the one. He's the one. Like, trust me, he's the one. Like, just mark my words, you know? <laughs> and um, I just, I, I just, I always sort of like, ha I just knew that Kendrick was the one. And so, um, of course, Tech did Fragile with, uh, with Kendrick, which I didn't produce that, but I did end up producing textbook stuff um, with, with XV, which was just by ways of us actually being, um, we just went to one of his shows one day and um we're backstage with him we're like you know let's finally do a track together and we gave him textbook stuff and he and he just did it you know he just jumped on it you know he liked the track a lot and it was just easy so um so yeah that that's my kendrick lamar track is textbook stuff so awesome wow i know i love the fact that you were like hey i he's going to be the one and you know what he ended up becoming the one Oh, I knew it. I mean, even to this day, I just think he's like the best. He's like, you know, the greatest to me, you know, that I would, I would love to uh, be in like more like closely involved with like everything he's doing right now. Cause he's just, he's just the greatest to me. Yeah. I definitely would love to be able to just not say job shadow, but kind of job shadow and just see how everything is run by him. Cause the stuff he puts out is just fire. It's just constant fire. Yeah, he's just he's just someone that there's just those artists that sort of just they create lanes, right? Rather than yeah. just like filling lanes, they create lanes. It's kind of like when they're there's artists that when their album drops, they everybody's tuned into it because we know, okay, this is what we got to do. You know what I mean? And so yeah. people kind of await certain albums to drop to be like, what's going to be next? And Kendrick is always one of the ones that sort of is you know we're waiting for that because we want to see what's going to happen for what's going to be the next sound you know? awesome. yeah you know what speaking of the next sound what's the next adventure for you well uh lately i've been um of course i've been i've been working with uh this band really closely um this band love ghost uh, we just dropped a single with rico nasty um i guess about a month or two ago um, which is getting like a lot of, a lot of press. That song was like a big song for them. Um, and, uh, I've, I've been developing them, like just working with them super closely and developing their sound. Um, and I've actually been doing a lot more actually like movie scoring and working on, Ooh. that was something that I always wanted to eventually be able to transition into kind of like working more like on arranging and composing and whatnot, working with movies. And so, um, so yeah, I've been doing a lot of that lately. It's something I've, I've like dabbled in in the past. I've done like a few um, just like super indie movies before and some documentaries and I worked on the Boondock season one years ago. That was sort of my introduction into like scoring, you know, yeah, yeah television. But um, yeah, that's what I've been. I've been kind of like focused on that lately. And um, and like, yeah, like I said, like developing Love Ghost. That's what I'm currently working on right now. So. All right. Well, I cannot wait to hear more from you in terms of everything, especially Thank movie you. scoring. Uh, where can we be able to find you? Uh, Instagram is the main platform that I use. It's Mike Summers Cookup on Instagram. Of course, I'm on Twitter. Um, it's produced. It says it's it's produced like P R O D Mike Summers on Twitter. Um, and uh, I, you know, honestly, I would say Instagram is where Instagram is the main place. I use that more than anything. So, wow! Thank you so much, Mike, for taking this time to chat and. To hear the stories about everything that you do is fantastic. Sure. I'm so excited.